The gun violence epidemic is gripping the nation, and uh, New Orleans has long struggled with that problem. Last year alone, the city had 193 homicides. That's a slight reduction from the previous two years, but that's still eight times worse than the rest of the nation. Average it out, the streets of New Orleans are seeing about 16 killings a month. But Mayor Mitch Landrieu is trying to change that with an initiative called NOLA for Life. It includes more than a dozen programs. Among them is a public awareness campaign called Flip the Script. He partnered with film director Spike Lee. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu joining us now from Washington. Good to see you, Mayor. Hey, Frederick. How are you? I'm doing good. So you launched Great. this campaign in October. It has, uh, you know, about a dozen programs within it. But how does it work exactly? And are you seeing any results? Well, absolutely. Yeah, we're starting to see some measurable results. But I think the, the big point is that we in New Orleans have faced what the nation needs to face is that we have a huge problem with violence. It's actually an epidemic. Uh, so Hadia Pendleton in Chicago is very similar to Brianna Allen. Uh, in New Orleans, or to the police officer in Alexandria that got shot, or to police officer John Passaro who uh, got shot this weekend and is now paralyzed from his waist down. It is an epidemic, uh, and we have to deal with it. And while Congress continues to argue about gun regulation, which is an important part of this, it's much, much deeper, and it's going to require an all-hands-on-deck effort. And that's what NOLA for Life tries to do, get on the front end of it, the middle of it, the end of it, and try everything to reduce the level of violence that's really threatening the viabilities of all of the cities in America. And you say try everything, so it's more than an awareness campaign. We're talking about, especially in the city of New Orleans, when you look at the bulk of the violent crime, uh, unfortunately, you know, it is committed mostly by groups made up of mostly young black men and boys. And Correct. you have a program specifically geared at trying to uh, target these young young men, young boys, trying to, Correct. I guess, catch them before they get into trouble? Well, the first thing we wanted to do is identify was who was shooting and who was getting shot. Um, and we found that African-American kids between 16 and 25, 88% uh, of whom know each other, shooting each other with a handgun, over what seems to be to rational people uh, an inconsequential beef. And so one of the things that we did was we increased our recreation funding to make sure that we had uh, the opportunity for kids to do something else. We increased our job training programs. We actually now are taking the kids that are incarcerating and waiting trial on those on probation and doing what's called a call-in and offering them an alternative. If they continue to shoot, we're going to go after them with everything that we have to secure the streets. And if they choose to be at peace, we're going to give them to the, to, to the social service agencies and the worker training and put them uh, in the front of the line. But it requires a federal, state, and local input, and it requires more resources, not less. Uh, and at the end of the day, when you think about this, historically, in this nation, since 1980, 611,000 people have been killed on the streets of America. So this isn't an inconsequential problem, and it is something that affects almost every area in the United States of America. And you mentioned the investments have to come from the federal level, state level, local level, but then tonight as we talk about the forced government spending cuts uh, going into effect, you have met with other uh, mayors, um, many of you meeting there in D.C. How exactly might these budget cuts, these federal budget cuts, impact uh, programs there in New Orleans? Well, first of all, they're going to impact them fairly dramatically. Uh, the, the opponents of this say it's only a 2% cut, so it's a nick, but when you add that on top of cuts that have come over the last couple of years and the financial difficulties of the cities. We're not all in the same peril of Detroit, but every city in America is facing the difficulties of actually l delivering the services to the people. So the folks up in Washington can talk a lot about theory, but on the ground, when they say do more with less, the reality is you do less with less, and there's no question about that. And when we, when we have to fight something as a nation, it requires both the federal, state, local, the not-for-profits, the faith-based organizations all to come in, and we will, around a national purpose. And I can't think of one more important than securing the streets of America for our kids. And so when we talk about, you know, federal, like, lunch programs for kids, uh, is it a significant uh, population all, of kids that we're relying uh, on those programs that will now perhaps Absolutely. not be able to count on them as a result all, of this. All of that stuff matters. Now, somebody yesterday said, listen, don't worry about it. It's not going to be the end of the world. And what I wonder as a mayor is, since when did it's not going to be the end of the world become the standard of excellence for America? Mm -hmm. 
that's not really the standard that we need to be focusing on. We have to have communities where people are safe, where people have a job, where people can do the things that are necessary to raise their families. And in too many cities in America, we don't have that. And it requires an all-hands-on-deck approach to get this thing done. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu, thanks so much for joining us from Washington, D.C. today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.